Hi, it's Noel from Creation Effects, and this is a tutorial for adding content to the pages of your 3D book. And the 3D book template for After Effects allows you to make your own book animation. Um, if you purchased it at creationeffects.com, this video will give you some useful tips for using the included images to design your pages. Um, I know that a lot of people who aren't too familiar with After Effects are buying this template, so this tutorial is geared specifically to beginners, uh, but there are some important techniques that I go over in here, and I think even an intermediate user will probably learn something from this. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, you should have gone through the first three steps in the main tutorial. So let's open up the step four folder, and I'll open the sample designs folder just to show you these real quick. Uh, these are some pre-designed pages and covers um, that might save you some time and you can use these to fill up your pages. These are all images from the images folder and you can move them around and put in your own text and images and just do whatever you want with these. Let's open that images folder and these subfolders may be different uh, for you depending on which 3D book template you bought. I want to show you how to work with these images because there are several kind of images in here and you can't always just drag them into your page and have them look good. You may have to do a little work or change some settings, so let's go through them. Uh, first, the cover textures. You can just drag these into your cover pre-comps here in the pre-comps folder. I'll open the book back cover pre-comp. Uh, this may be a different size in the comp, so if you just open up the transform properties of the layer like this, you'll see the uh, scale property and you can unlink the width and height if you need to and just scale it down to fit the comp. I'm going to open a page pre-comp now. And there's always a default texture in these pre-comps, but I'll choose a new paper texture from the paper texture folder. I'll go with faded one. And I actually have to scale this one up a little. And you can see there's only two pages that look like this, Faded 1 and Faded 2. And we have 20 pages in our book. And since this page has some splotches on it, people might notice uh, that this paper looks the same on every page. So something you can do when putting the same paper texture into all of your pages um, you can flip some of them or rotate some of them just to sort of break up that repetitiveness. So open the layer and under transform you can increase the rotation and turn it 90 degrees uh, and you can flip the page horizontally or vertically by unlinking the width and height scale properties and then making one of these values a negative number. Alright, I'll close the paper textures folder and open this dirt overlay folder. If you have these in your version, you can just drag these over your paper to add dirt and texture to your pages. Uh, now right now all we see is the dirt layer and not the paper, which brings us to our first design trick, which is blending modes. You should see them here. If not, right click here and then go to uh, columns and choose modes. And then in this drop down menu you can choose from lots of different blending modes, which will blend your dirt layer with your paper layer in different ways. And you can quickly preview all of these just by holding down the shift key and then hitting the plus key. So this blending mode is called multiply and it's a good one for showing the dirt, but it's still way too strong. So I'll open the layer and decrease the opacity to something like 15%. Okay, let's look at the artwork and design elements folder. There's lots of good stuff in here. I'll just start dragging different kinds of images into my page comp. Uh, first, in this alphabet folder, there's a couple options for every letter of the alphabet here, which are great for that first letter in your body of text. Um, to illustrate a technique, I'll go with this capital letters one.jpg file. So the way to separate one of these letters from the others is by using a mask. So with this layer selected, select the rectangle tool up here and draw a box around the letter. And this letter still doesn't look like it's part of the page, so I'll use the multiply blending mode again. And with your selection tool, you can then move your image around. 
Let's look at another example. I'll bring capital letters 2 down here. And I need to mask out this letter just like before, but I can't draw a box mask around all of this without getting some of this letter as well. So I need to use a different masking tool. I'll choose the pen tool and then draw a path around this B. And you can make a line curved by clicking and dragging it if you need to. And then be sure to close the loop by clicking the original point. Let's look at the frames folder. Some of these are PNG files with an alpha channel, uh, meaning you can see right through the areas that should be transparent. Um, it would have been nice to make every image in here a PNG with a transparent background, and that would have made things easier for you, but it also would have made some huge file sizes on some of these really detailed images, and it uh, would have just caused your book to process too slow, which is why I had to use JPEGs for a lot of these, just because it was more practical sometimes. So with these JPEG frames, um, you can usually just use a blending mode, like that. But let's look at this one, flower frame onejpeg This is uh, different because it has this weird green color, like a number of other images in this template. And I did this so that you can easily make the center area transparent. You just use a color key effect. So with this layer selected, go to Effects and Keying and Color Key. And use the color picker here to sample that green color. I actually can't do that myself because the color picker makes After Effects crash for me for some reason. But I'll enter my green color in here. And then I'll increase the color tolerance. And that'll key out all of that green color to make it transparent. Now there's still this issue of the edge here, which doesn't look nice, so I'll use my pen tool for that, and I'll draw a mask around the image. It doesn't have to be perfect. That still doesn't look any better. But when I open the layer and open the mask properties here, I can feather the edge to make it softer. And now that looks better. I have a placeholder image here, just a random photo of mine. So I'll drag that under the frame so you can see what it looks like. Um, you can barely see the frame now because of this, the blending mode that I chose. So I'll draw a quick mask around the image so that it fits the frame. If it's a rectangular frame, then it'll be easy. You just use your rectangle tool. For an oval like this, click and hold down the rectangle tool and choose the ellipse tool, and then draw an oval-shaped mask on your image. And then if you go back to your selection tool, you can select individual points or uh, and refine that shape a bit. So that's all quite a bit of work, but that's the most complicated example of using a frame. Let me open this next folder. There's some original artwork in here that I made. All of these are PNG files, so that makes things easier. Um, I'll bring in this banner image. There's a, a number of images like this where if you add text, you'll have to make it curve to make it fit on the banner. So first I'll select the text tool and type some text. And then with my text layer selected, I'll grab my pen tool and draw a curved path that matches the curve of the image. Click and drag to make that line curve. And when that's done, open the layer and open text and open the path options section. And next to path, choose mask one, which is the mask that you just made. Let's go to the public domain folder. Lots of good stuff in here. And there's a ton more online. If you look at the step four instructions comp here, there's some links in here on where you can find more design elements and vintage artwork that uh, you can use for free. I've cleaned up all these images and increased the contrast so that they'll look better on your pages. Um, I'll bring in this border element 7.jpg file just to show you what you can do with these border elements. These are useful for making borders or just some kind of dividing line on your page. Um, but they may not be the right size. So you can use your mask tool to crop it and make it smaller if you want. Or you can extend them by going to Effect, Stylize, and CC Repetile. 
extend them however many pixels in any direction, and then you can duplicate this layer to make copies and rotate them and move them around to build a nice border around your pages. And we'll add a blending mode for that too. And another useful effect, let's say you want your image to be a different color, like red, you can go to Effect and Color Correction and Tint. Then since the color we want to change is black, we'll map the black to a red color. I'll just grab one of these design elements here and drag it in. Um, this has a dark design, which you can see over your paper if you use a darken blending mode or multiply blending mode. And But what if we want to see a, a light design? Well, you can go to Effect and then Channel and then Invert, which will invert the color. So black is now white. And now instead of using the multiply blending mode, we'll switch it to Add and you can see a lighter design now. There's a ton of tips like this that I can show you, but I have to draw the line somewhere, so I'll just show you a couple more techniques which I used quite a bit, and that's layer styles and track mats. I'll bring in this floral pattern one image, and I'll scale it up, and that'll be a background pattern for my page. Um, now if I go to the layer menu, I can go to layer styles, and there's a number of effects in here that I can add to the layer, like a stroke, which is an outline, or a shadow, or a glow. I'll choose a stroke, and you can edit it in the layer. I'll make it 10 pixels and black. And I'll switch the blending mode of the layer to multiply and lower the opacity. Next, I'll bring in another element. Let's go with the, uh, the lion head here. I want to see the paper texture through this, but if I change the blending mode, I'll be able to see the floral pattern behind it too, and I don't want that. So I need to add a track mat to this floral pattern layer here to make this area inside the lion's head transparent. I could draw a detailed mask um, in the shape of the lion's head using the pen tool, but that would take a long time. So instead, I'll select the floral pattern layer and then change the track mat to alpha mat inverted. And what this does is it basically erases any area that the layer above it covers. So in this case, the area that the lion head covers. And it automatically hides that layer that, that's above it, um, but you can turn it back on with this eye icon. And now you can change the blending mode of this lion's head, and you won't see the floral pattern behind it. All right, I hope you learned some things here that you can use, and maybe all these settings and the interface isn't quite so scary to you now. Or maybe it's even scarier, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm sure you'll do great, and uh, good luck on your project and creating some unique designs.